well, a line of shops like this definitely does somewhat beget a starting 100 gold. Very interesting act overall. Lots of rest sites. There's a five rest site path. That's rather curious. I think we'd rather go this way, though. Get uh, two elites and four rest sites. That could actually make a remove two cards start really good in exchange for 18 damage if I go the five rest site path, because we could maybe rest at one of them. Um, remove an additional card at the early shop. We're down three cards. And from there we can build something more effective than the defect starter deck. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Defect is definitely a character that thrives on strike removes. These starting four strikes are abysmal damage, just like they are for the other characters. Uh, only more so because the defect has fewer ways than any of the other three to actually make these strikes do real damage. Did I know that the defect starter deck can beat Guardian with a perfect draw? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It's the it's really easy to underestimate just how good uh, three lightning orbs is in a boss fight, which is nine damage per turn every turn passively is so so good. Also, confusion says, how do I feel about removing a defend first on defect? Pretty strongly dislike it. Removing strikes will still increase your damage output because your two best damage cards are zap and dual cast. So anything that draws you those more frequently is going to help. I could definitely see the argument of uh, Defend first because... One, there is the threat of early Gremlin Knob, and two, there's a lot of good block cards in the Defect card pool that you could choose to add to replace that missing Defend. A Leap, perfectly fine. Auto Shield's pretty good. Charge Battery. But this character, more than any of the others, I think really wants to remove Strikes. Especially going into your first three encounters. Two strikes, four defends is so good. How are we going to deal with Hexaghost? That's always a challenge to answer. <clears throat> Get raving, thanks for 23 months. This month's Bezos bucks go to me because of the recent edition of Vampire Survivors. Keeping you in the game. Much appreciated. Keep on keeping on, I will do. I am going to remove two strikes. I think I really want to show off... We'll even go to a shop, because we really have no choice, unless I want to go this way specifically, which seems kind of crazy, right? That's three events, three combats into an elite. Eh. Worst things have been done. I'm going to take this path. So we're going to go light on elites, heavy on upgrades. This act is the intended plan. There's maybe a world where we could do this, but I really doubt it. And the idea is that with really few upgraded non-basic cards, we can have a very efficient deck overall. That'll help us out for later acts, even if our relic count is a little bit lower. So we end up with a... Oh, and that makes a card like Streamline pretty juicy, too. 15 damage, and then reduce the card's cost by one this combat. So every time we draw the Streamline, the more often we can draw the Streamline, the better this gets. The rebound first could make Streamline particularly spicy. I think in this case I want to go Streamline first. Probably a bit early for consume, although maybe early consume is something I should be thinking about more, especially in a act like this. If I'm not necessarily fighting early elites, then we could maybe think about grabbing focus. But I'm going to grab the, the small deck card. I'm going to trade even more health for a relic. I'm already planning on maybe resting one time. This seems fine. Two clicks for a bag of preparation, drawing us two more cards on turn one. You'll love to see it. Now we can buy a rebound, if we want to. There's a cool headed on sale. There's a card removal here. And yes, it would have been Sling of Courage first. What a, what a world we could be living in if I'd taken the 100 gold start. Bag of Prep Sling of Courage into three elites would be the play. 
Wonder if that would work out better or worse than this. <laughs> Pretty happy with the chill, quite frankly. Being able to draw the streamline quicker. Being able to get frost orbs, both valuable things. And I can afford them both. What about fairy in a bottle and not resting? What about not fairy in a bottle and still not resting? With bag of prep, I feel like that's where we're headed. Just, just don't rest, forehead. Easy. Still removing strikes here. Since I've got this streamline, I think I don't need much else in the way of attack cards. Although I might remove one defend before the final strike. We're also happy to continue to remove defends once we're out of strikes. All these basic cards can go. So do I still want five upgrades? That might be unnecessary. I'm actually okay spending upgrades on basically all four of these cards currently. With Streamline being the first. Hmm. The only winning move is not to play. Damage cards, that is. Smallest deck that I've won with, my smallest Ascension 20 heart win that I can remember is seven cards. Is that too much block? Scrape is interesting here. So is Recycle. Hmm. Very interesting. Scrape could actually be kind of nuts. We plan around it. After playing Streamline two times, Scrape will draw it. Scrape will also draw Zap or Dual Cast if they're upgraded. We have to keep offense in mind, as we do need a plan to beat Hexaghost at the end of the act. So I'm not necessarily okay with Blizzard at the moment. Or uh, Glacier at the moment, that is. Criminally. Criminally overrated. Definitely paying out over 100 gold for a, a fairy in a bottle can be a bit speculative. It's not realistically a heal unless you're below 30% health, which is already pretty scary territory. After playing Streamline zero times, Scrape will discard it. That's true. Let's see, we have... Coming up, three upgrades and... Uh, maybe two upgrades and a rest. We'll see. A relic. I wouldn't necessarily say Scrape is good damage. It's got a lot of utility. I'm gonna give it a try here. And sure, I'll lose a little bit of max health for the gold medal. Means we'll get bonus money from here on out. Could turn into healing in a later act. We'll get the bloody idol. Assuming we don't take ectoplasm again. Dang it. And I'm definitely not going this way. All right, so we'll start with a streamline upgrade. Probably zap second. Depends on what uh, cultist friend here draws. Drops. Okay, here I won't play the scrape because I want to keep the streamline in the draw pile. Probably. Yes, yeah, streamline. Streamline beam lock. Actually, wait, do I? Because what's dual cast scrape strike? That's 16 plus 13 which is 29. So rather than doing what I said I was going to do, which is streamline defend, take one. We don't do that. Kill next turn. Guaranteed, take zero. Twenty-five bucks. And a claw. Do I want a claw? 
where it's set up actually pretty well for it. We'd need another one, realistically. We already have a cool headed, which is definitely encouraging me to take a claw here. And the scrape, of course, helps too. Interestingly enough, white noise can also work with scrape after being upgraded. Can't get the second claw without taking the first. Maybe that's a good thing too. Claw does help against Hexaghost a little bit. Can't just rely on the streamline, I don't think. This might be a total trap. We'll find out one way or the other. All right, cool headed next. Probably zap to follow. Or dual cast. Maybe dual cast. Ooh, cheap removals. Yeah. Okay. Really glad that we spent 75 gold at the first shot for a card remove. This saves us 50 gold on the next remove, and more than that on any further removals. Can I do the elite with 27 health? The upgrade would be, like I said, dual cast, probably. That will not help me. I think the claw made us worse at most of the elites for the moment. So resting feels even more like a decent idea. I don't really need health for Hexagos, though. I'm not feeling capable enough. Sleep here. I don't want to like bottom roll against Knob. We still get two more upgrades this act. Surprisingly difficult to play Streamline. I think what we want to do is try to kill with Streamline next turn. Yeah, and we'll do 15 damage with Weakens, so this works. Potion of Capacity. Yeah, pretty glad I rested. We got offered Cold Snap, Rebound, or Go for the Eyes, letting us apply Weaken. Rebound is pretty good here, actually. But uh, Go for the Eyes might be better, given its interaction with Scrape. Thing is, rebound works to scrape too, because you can rebound a zero cost card and then scrape it. I'm gonna take the rebound. I think that's a, a crucially important card manipulation card in a deck that's looking to do a lot of card shenanigans. And it is knob first. And yes, we get to rebound the streamline because. Smart. In fact, I'll even invest the energy potion here. And we're going to... Hmm, I don't want to discard that necessarily. Oh, I know what I can do. Yeah, so... Energy Potion, Rebound, Streamline, Cool-Headed, Draw it again, Play it again, so... Three... That would take all our energy, I can't play the Scrape. Works for me. Alright, Streamline will now be free when we see it next. Question is, which, if any, skills do we use on this turn? Dual cast would do 16 outright. We probably want to make sure Gremlin Knob's below 20 so that we can kill with Streamline. What other damage values might we, might we be able to do? I think we definitely play this, no matter what. Question of, do we defend or zap, mainly? So 13, that's, that's Strike and Scrape. 
This would do six more, meaning we would just need Scrape or Strike and Claw would work too. Or just Rebound would also work. It costs us eight health to play the Zap. But I don't need more than this health anyway, actually. So I think what we should do is play the Zap. We'll take... 12 damage this turn, go down to 32, which is, quite frankly, a better number for fighting Hexaghost anyway. Because we're fighting Hexaghost, I think losing the calculated amount of health, having the higher chance to stay at about 30 is probably a good idea. And indeed, we would not have killed Gremlin Up this turn if I hadn't played the Zap, because we ended up drawing this hand. So boy, do I feel like a genius right about now. Bottled Lightning. Bottle of Skill. Guess I'm okay with a bottle of Cool Headed Plus, but not that okay. Offered another rebound. FTL or Chill. Shouldn't have taken any skills. But I could have a bottled Chill, you know? Actually, we want Scrape to be able to draw this chill. So I am going to bottle Cool Headed. Take the Fire Potion. Did that right, yeah? Yes, okay, good. Now I definitely upgrade Dual Cast over Zap. Although we might want to get them both upgraded. I never take attack skills or powers. It sounds like you might be playing too much Watcher, Merle. Ooh, a transform. We can get rid of the last strike. Let's do it. All strikes gone at the end of Act 1, and we have Smiling Mask from here, which means we don't even have, like, removal debt or something. Like, we haven't used up most of our removals by front-loading the, the cost. It's all downhill from here. So we could easily, by the end of this run, remove all four of these defends as well. That's pretty exciting. Of course, we'll want to add a way to block that isn't the four defends, but there's a lot of ways to do that. Steam Barrier would be a good start. Heck yeah, transform the strike into removal inflation into a claw. Yes, chat, you can't get the second one until you take the first one. Amazing. All right, now we upgrade Scrape. I love it, to draw one more. Deal 10, draw five. It's happening. The Claw. The Claw. Why not upgrade Zap? At this point, I no longer need the Lightning Orbs to help me out against Hexaghost. We're just looking to draw the Claws, basically, and the Streamline as much as possible. We could maybe consider upgrading Zap, but I'm probably just going to remove it. That's a pretty good case for Scrape. Looks like Streamline Scrape. Note that you have to have the room in hand to draw five in order for Scrape to actually try to draw five. Behold. Okay, here's where it would be not a good idea to play Scrape, because it prevents me from drawing the streamline. I think this is Zap Dual Cast Defend. That looks good. Let's dual Cast a Frost Orb for 10 block. Block for 17 out of 18. Next turn we can rebound the streamline. Put that streamline back on top. Although, is Claw actually more damage than Streamline, one wonders. Not yet it isn't, but by the end of the fight it should be. 
So is it better to rebound the claws? So confusing. And now we're starting to get turns like this. Rebound, claw, dual cast the frost orb, draw two, draw the claw with the other claw, and play streamline, and we have an energy left over somehow? What? Hello? This deck is awesome. Clawsome. The power of the claw. Actually was better to rebound streamline. Noted. Both reboot and seek are insane here. Of course, we get the bottle lightning before the seek appears, so this can never be a bottled seek, but it is still bag of preparation plus seek. So that's pretty sweet. But what about reboot? <clears throat> reboot allows us to reshuffle all of our cards back into the draw pile. For the most part, this deck does want to play its cards over and over again. The claws, the streamline. So there's actually a pretty good argument for reboot as something that could potentially be a draw four or upgraded draw six for zero cost. How intriguing. Especially as we get to remove more defends with the uh, smiling mask. I think that's going to get better and better. Meteor Strike and try to abuse it. I think that might be a, a truly valid strategy on the defect, something that is underexplored by a lot of players. Meteor Strike is a very breakable card, especially when combined with defects, card manipulation effects. If you can get Meteor Strike into play one time, you can get Meteor Strike into play many times, and that is crazy strong. But I don't think it's the right answer here. I, th I think reboot and uh, upgrade the reboot is going to be oddly bonkers. Stronger than the Seek would be or could be. Madness time? This deck would love a Madness, especially a Madness Plus. Let's let's take the reboot. Let's see how that ends up working out for us. Oh my goodness. Empty Cage? Remove two defends right now. Oh man. Not the world's worst uh, nuclear battery either, but Empty Cage is, is definitely the the, like, game breaker here. We're basically playing a Pandora's box deck that we made ourselves at this point with only two defends remaining. We're going to remove another defend at the first shop in Act 2. Be down to one defend. All claws. <clears throat> I could actually go... Yes, yeah, so I could I could remove zap instead of defend. Go, uh... with these two removes. That's also quite decent. I mostly want to be dual casting Frost Orbs anyway, so I'm very happy to get rid of Zap here. Add another Cool Headed, hopefully, in the future. Time to go Claw in. But yeah, I think, I think card removals here is absolutely ridiculous. Just absurdly good. I'm, I am going to go defend Zap, actually. Upon review of the datums, I've got a better upgrade. The reboot... And we have three more defends to get rid of. <clears throat> We'd also like to add a cool headed, a, maybe a steam barrier. I'd consider a charge battery, but I wouldn't really like it. We don't necessarily need to go heavy on elites this act. Our deck is in such good shape that as long as we can continue to remove cards and upgrade cards, uh, we don't need to add a whole lot from here. But we're also go probably going to see that we perform extremely well, so we might be able to just donk some elites. Uh, I guess we'll see how the first few fights go. Uh, and then I'll mark this in red. Could even maybe go for burning elite? That seems kind of absurd. Probably want to visit this shop. So actually, I think I like this, this green path better. We'll fight one elite early. Get a whole bunch of rest sites and another shop for another remove. So remove both the remaining defends this act. Upgrade, reboot. Figure out the rest from there. But we might go red, we'll see. I think we're going to be absurdly powerful in fights for the most part. Do I want this event? 
I think we do like events quite a bit with Gold Knight. These nerds have no idea how screwed they are. Not a clue. So how do I want this to work? Dual cast two. Okay, so I don't need any block this turn. Which means we can hit the one that's buffing. Rebound, claw, then scrape. Yeah, that's the play. That's the play. And then I could even reboot at the end to try to draw more stuff. But I don't think that I will. I think I'll keep that reboot for a future turn. Once again, rebound, claw, and scrape is pretty good. More claws. Not bad. There's the second cool headed that I wanted. I will take it and we'll spend one of our upgrades to upgrade it. This is a huge find. More card draw is going to make this deck so much better. And more frost orbs is going to make this deck a lot better too. You might be tempted by the beam or the double energy. But no, the cool headed. Yeah, we barely want the streamline now. Barely. Energy potion. Yeah, Energy Potion helps us get started with Streamline. Oh, this is... Oh, my... S smiling Mask, you shouldn't have. Oh, my goodness. Removals for everyone. Remove both of the remaining defends right now. Very well, there's three left, I guess. Remove two more defends right now. Donk one here. Not gonna buy the hand drill. Sorry, hand drill lovers in chat. But not today. Who needs a Sunder when you have Claw? Ah. Hmm. How do we feel about Medical Kit? Is there any need at all for that? Helps a lot against Nemesis, potentially. Depending on how small the deck is, could help a lot against Heart, too. Does nothing for a long time, I agree. But what it does, is that something that we're gonna need a long time from now? I mean, our, our short game seems like it's fine, quite frankly, so... Oh, I think actually this is the path we're taking. We'll do two elites, and then this. But yeah, specifically helping against Nemesis, a little bit against Heart, a bit against Shield and Spear. Hmm. Feels like if we have enough card draw, we're really not going to care, huh? I can use that money for a different relic, and it lets me get a removal right now. Yeah, I I'm not I'm not convinced either that this medical kit is worth it. I don't think we need it for double orb walkers. I think we just kill the orb walkers on turn one with the way this deck is headed. Is Leap a consideration? We're gonna try to block with something that also helps contribute to our overall draw engine, which Leap does not. So I'd like to just block with cool headeds and focus, ideally. What about slavers? Fire potion. Bam, done. No, 
I don't think we'd have too much of a problem against slavers either. Now, if I had Abacus, I mean, we'd probably just still take Abacus anyway, right? Okay, keep this money. Shell Parasite. You do make me slightly wish that I had not removed... so many cards that blocked. And yet, here we are. So what is this? We push the Frost Orb to the front and then dual cast? Or what are we doing here? It's like a cool-headed, cool-headed dual cast. It seems fine. And then we can reboot. We'll cast again. Easy block. That's my planned mechanism for blocking. That's why I upgraded the, du the dual cast and not the zap, too, was to be able to do this later in the run. Perfect shelled parasite fight. Up. Oh, what? Hmm. Now there's a choice. Bias cognition versus claw. There's also an ancient potion on the ground, so I think the game's trying to tell me something. Uh, but but quite frankly, we love focus. Focus is how this deck can block late game. You just saw what the trick we did with the dual cast, right? Imagine that with a bunch of focus. That's what Bias Cog lets us do, and it's going to be a huge deal. Merle would argue that another claw is actively bad. I can see exactly why you might say that. Because we wanted the entire deck to be able to fit in our hand, right? And then we just cycle cool headeds. Yeah, I think I might agree with that, too. Ideally, what we want is to be able to just cool-headed claw for our entire turn one. With maybe a scrape here or there. But Bias Cog is not a real card, because it doesn't go to the discard pile. Uh, that was the wrong potion to discard. I think that's fine. So how big of a deal would it be to get the... The green key right now. That's what I'm starting to wonder. Oh my god, yes! Get in here. Your golden idol begins to dull in color and begins bleeding from its eyes. The bleeding never ceases. We now heal money. Heal money? Heal gold. Heal for hit points whenever we get money. A streamline become unplayable? No, merely unnecessary. This still is kind of a scary fight, though, right? I think we'd rather just grab the two elites. We should be in pretty good shape in Act 3. The only reason I'm considering getting the Burning Elite right now is because if I have to get the Burning Elite in Act 3, it probably means I can visit fewer stores and get less removals. Does Streamline ever become a remove target? It's all up to how many removes we can get. My next removals from here would be Defend, then Streamline, then Rebound and then decline removal from there. So I think we have three more useful removals currently. Which means I don't think I need the Burning Elite now, because we're getting one here, one in Act 4. 
I just have to be able to get the Burning Elite in one, in one shop in Act 3. That's most likely going to occur. Scrapeful mostly discard cards. Do I Ancient Potion the Bias card for this fight? I don't think so. I think this was probably a potion we'd try to keep to the heart. Pretty hard for me to justify its use otherwise. Yeah, okay, now we scrape these. I could see myself using the energy potion on this turn, though. Although, we actually seem like we're mostly fine, right? Yeah, just full block that way. No wounds, please. Rebound, claw, and scrape. This is a very cool defect. Malbank. I'm still going to go to that shop. You can't stop me. Thanks for the money, though. While we could get draw off a, compil off a compile driver, I don't think we want to. Oh, Malbank Bloody Idol, the healing. The healing. The power. That is pretty nice. Five hit point heal every floor. Quite frankly, though, I don't envision us exactly needing much sustain. So as cool as it is, I, I don't think I care. Uh, that's actually a really good draw next turn. Hmm. So close. I'll heal anyway, right? I'll not play the bias for the moment. Should have dual casted there. Can't math though. And we get to full heal after the fight anyway, so irrelevant. There's the third claw. I think two cool headeds and two claws is the perfect amount of both, though. So we do not want a third claw or a third cool headed. We just want to upgrade what we've got and get more relics and stuff. And remove cards. Sounds good. Can never have too much claw. Beg to strongly beg to disagree in this deck. You can, in fact, have too much claw. And it is to be avoided. If it's all possible. Sound. Claw. Scream. Claw. We wanted to chill first, doesn't matter. Claw. 
And I'll let the reboot stick around for now. Really still want the upgrade on that reboot before it's actually any good. Hmm. I could just rebound to Fen. I can't even play it twice, though. Dang. My hit points. draw the claws again. Thank you. Good talk. The damage of these really ramps up when we're able to play them very consistently every turn. Don't need a consume. Don't need a heat sinks. Don't need much at all, really. The healing. Can no longer become weakened. Ginger. Hmm. Could help against champ. It's not too bad against heart. Might be better to take the sapphire key here. Now let's do that. So, first we upgrade. Actually, the reboot first. Reboot. Cool headed bias cog. Should sort us out here. These nerds? Great. We'll fight them, get even more money. Slaughter them and get the red mask applying weak on turn one. Don't mind if I do, actually. Rebound the claw. Grabum Bear We're Bear. A claw. A double bias log. Yep. I'll take another one. We're going to get orange pellets next, and this will be the easiest run in the history of Spire. The most beautiful defect ever created. Double biased claw. Scrape draws reboot. That's weird. I want it. We're able to kill things so quickly with the claws that it perfectly counteracts the per turn effects of the bias cognition. It's pretty cool, I think. Card could fit into the deck. How many total cards do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we don't want to add anything that doesn't exhaust. Because we already have like the, the perfect number. Once we get rid of everything, although statuses are gonna be a problem. Dang it, medical kit. Maybe we should have bought medical kit. <laughs> the fragment is just wildly unnecessary when we have two bias cogs. Would we like some max health? Because apparently that's what's for sale here. Just max health. 
and of course the much needed cord removal. That we are going to pay for, even if it does cost us, us our almighty mall bank. Ah. Panache could be cute, letting us deal area damage for a certain number of cards played. I think that's going to be wildly unnecessary too. Likewise, Turbo. What energy card would I take? Madness. Madness is the energy card I want. So do I pay 166 for 7 max? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, at a certain point we could even remove Scrape. That is true. the bias for blocking. I'm only going to play one early here. Don't need to play both, at least not yet. I think we want to let a Cinder's Bane go when we get it. Rather than rebooting. If it's in hand. Basically, think of the claw scaling as there's a certain number of claws we have to play to win. So, the... Whatever lets us play more claws per turn is kind of the strategy we want to employ in most situations could start making Streamline cheaper. Probably want to line up the Stone Calendar with our efforts for maximum value. Alright, I'll play this. Possible. So they say. Get him, Stone Calendar. Blah. GG. Amplify wildly unnecessary. Machine learning for more base draw per turn. I don't know that it's necessarily worth picking that up, but that could be a way to help with statuses. And let's us cycle the deck more, because it's just more base draw, right? Let's us kind of cycle the deck more aggressively, even in fights where we haven't removed everything. Okay, I'll pick this up for, for the late game. Yeah, when you don't even think about the buffer, because it's just not, not even registering. Okay, we could take Cursed Key. I do want more energy. Actually, Busted Crown seems fine, right? Like, what cards do I need? Oddly okay with a Busted Crown here. The deck is more or less complete. Mostly we just want uh, ways to keep the focus so that we can block against Heart. We have one Ancient Potion already, so... We're by and large there. Which makes me quite happy with a busted crown. There's still a number of cards we'd be happy to take. Don't particularly feel like we need Frozen Core, although it could actually let us do some nice stuff with the with the dual cast. Frozen Core is surprisingly useful. Guaranteed frost generation. Hmm. Surprisingly useful. 
would say this is equivalent to about... Seven, uh, what, well, what does a frost e evoke for? Five plus five, at least about ten block per turn is what this is. It's actually pretty good. But if we don't need that ten block, it's not going to matter, right? I think more energy lets us also do the same thing, though, because we can play one more cool-headed. Which also means we can play more claws, so the energy is much better, actually. Yeah, okay, I'll take Buster Crown. So, we must go to the Burning Elite. It is, thankfully, not inconveniently positioned. In fact, we get to go to two shops. Two shops. So we get two removals this act and defeat the Burning Elite. If we want to go to two elites, this is the way to do it. What a cool deck this is. Also go. Yeah, there's only if I want to get two elites, including the burning, I have to go to this elite. But do we even have to remove, streamline, rebound, maybe even scrape. But I do like the scrape actually. But at a minimum, streamline and rebound are gonna go next. Yeah, once we get enough removals, we don't need to put things back on top of the draw pile anymore because they'll be the only card in the draw pile. So you can just draw cards and you get the same cards over and over. Sure, I'll scrape and then just play the claw. No reason not to. More energy means we get to play the streamline occasionally, but it's gonna be removed soon. So perhaps that's a problem. Actually, wait, is this one better than the unupgraded one, or than the upgraded one? Because it's it, it leaves? Hmm. Interesting. Deliberately unupgraded hologram. What's the main utility of this? Hologram dual cast again? Hmm. I don't think so. Falling protection? We have no we have no need for that. We can lose any attack in the deck. If I go down to one claw, that's still actually acceptable. At this point, although it'd be a little awkward. Oh man, we did we did get offered a recycle earlier. That would have been pretty nice, huh? Ah. Oh! <laughs> da abacus. Whenever we shuffle the draw pile, gain six block. Yes, please. I think I'm also gonna buy this master strategy for a uh, hundred ninety nine gold. Some argument for uh, Nunchaku here. 
but I think I'd rather have the upfront draw. I'm sorry, Streamline. Yeah, for energy, we don't really need. That is the, the kind of problem with it. Give us card draw. For shuffles, we do really need. Get him, Abacus. Get him again, Abacus. And again. Good job, Abacus. You are good at this. See, now we can just play the scrape and guaranteed redraw both claws. Because they're the only cards in the discard pile. So we go claw, claw, scrape. Claw, claw, cool headed. Claw, scrape. Claw, claw, cool headed. Kill with claw. Like we're starting to have really, really silly turns. I don't need that. We should be able to kill Transient, no problem here. For example. Now let's go Rebound, Claw, Scrape for the Claws. Claw, Claw, give it a chill. Leave the Lightning Orb, leave the Reboot. Turn. It's cool to get both of those back. Claw, claw, rebound. But I take a beam cell. Beam cell would be unnecessary. Like, it multiplies the damage of the claws, but I don't think I need the claws to do more damage than they already do. Oops. That's sort of wrong, but then not wrong. We have a turn to spare on Transient as Transient dies. You can see that we are energy limited, so stuff like the, the Nunchaku actually would have been decent in its own rights. The energy potion has a use. Does the reboot prop the Abacus? Yes. Yes, it does. Spikers? Hm. Not on my watch. Storbs, please. None of that nonsense, please. Thank you. 
Another unupgraded hollow. We'll still be skipping that. Focus potion might be nice. Two more focus for one of the late game battles. Let's switch to that. Giant head should be a satisfying fight. Got bad news for you, sir. Don't take kindly to your kind around here. Still did not get the... The center's been there. Claw Claw. Is it actually better to not play the Scrape? Let's see. see. Otherwise, the loop we do is... Claw, Cool-Headed. One Claw, one Cool-Headed. So we get... Five Claw plays. It does block for more, if we care about that. To just play Cool-Headed Claw, Cool-Headed cool -headed Claw. But it doesn't loop unless you only play one claw. Oh man, more card draw. Upgrade master strategy here. Capacitor could be okay. I don't think we need extra orb slots, though. Does Sundial go infinite right now? Yes. Yes, it does. I think we're just gonna keep dunking cards, though. I'm sorry, Rebound, it's time. For you to be gone now. Goodbye. Alright, you can have the Focus Potion, sir. How much gold is Smiling Mask saved? 500 so far, apparently. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Hey, there's some energy. Scrape Bra's chill dual cast master strategy. Really would prefer if we don't get any wounds here. Just gonna reboot that. Play this. Yeah, now we draw exactly all six of the cards that are permanent, which is Cool-Headed, Cool-Headed, Claw, Claw, Scrape, Dual Cast. This is exactly the set of cards we want to be seeing every time. So now we can do Claw, Claw, Cool-Headed. Claw, Cool-Headed, and then just keep doing that. Maybe there's a good way to work in the Scrape there occasionally, too. Cables will be a lot of extra block. Our rightmost orb triggers its passive one extra time. Very, very good. Don't need a compile driver. Who needs card rewards anyway, am I right? Who needs them? Okay, this is a reasonable time to reboot. 
think if we don't get the Ascender's Bane in hand, Reboot is correct. Claw Claw? Is that the most claws? Not sure. It's time it's upgraded. This actually seems like it helps me, because we are energy limited initially, getting these uh, cards into play. We've got plenty of initial draw, and it gets drawn by Scrape. I'm going to take that one. Thanks, Busted Crown, for the useful card. All right, Time Eater, you might think could be a challenge for us, but that's not going to happen. I'm even just going to play both Bias Cogs. That's how little I even fear this creature at all. Block for 66. draw down here. We'll only draw five cards. How sad. Four turns. GG. If I'd been able to play one more Claw, I could have even done it a turn earlier. 37 cards for the Claw deck to kill Time Eater. GG. Barely even had time to say Foolish. We'll do that next turn. Actually, maybe wanted to kill Decca first in this fight. It doesn't really matter, though. They'll both die very similar times, since the claws scale in damage exponentially. Well, linearly, whatever you want to call it. die on the same turn.
ridiculous. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt out the room. Is this the heart of the spire? The source of this clossum? Defect run. Slapping its way through the spire. Claw is law. We're centennial puzzle. Maybe someday. I can only upgrade one of them. I can't choose one of my children over the other. I'll upgrade you instead. Actually Panacea here for the other biased. Seems hilarious. I don't even think we need it, but I'm going to take it. Uh, although I can't remove the card, right? I do want the scrape. That's what I decided. So I don't have anything I want to remove. So yeah, I'll take a Panacea. Oh, I can't remove, afford. I'm bad at math. Don't need either biased. Let's remove one of them. Because of Sundial, I think you might be right, quite frankly. Although... Can't actually generate that much block. Could arguably remove dual cast at this point. Although it does help on the initial turns. It's not really going to matter much. Or chill. Chill, I think, is actually important against Spear and Shield. Or I have to use the Gambler's Brew. Action Rizo, thanks for 25 months. Swift Potion better than Gambling Brew. Hey, Teutonic Knight, thanks for those 16 months. That's what I think I'm going to do, is Swift Potion over Gambler's Brew. Keep the current cards. The burns! They burn! Easy. Vajra means the claws do one more damage. That's not getting taken. All right, Mr. Hart, got real bad news for you. But I have real good news for you, Centennial Puzzle. Stop that now. All five statuses, which is what the Swift Potion's for. That looks better.
One tanky defect. Ah, dang. Definitely feeling the weight with these two statuses, though. And the reboot. I haven't yet bothered to play. Six damage claws. GG. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.